Right, this is your African King of Comedy, Michael Blackson. You watching real friends real talk. Get real with it, my son. What's going on? We are back with another quarantine TV edition of Real Fans Real Talk. We got a goodie for you today because we got some family back in the in the building with us today. Um, it's a whole lot to go on. Let me introduce my co-host first because I got to do a big introduction for this man right here. Um, but Legend of Two Games, Eric Sanchez, what's going on? Yo, what's really good, bro? I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. You know what I'm saying? Like like our special guests did in some of his recent fights. So yes. go ahead and introduce the man because the people want to know, man. So, you know, straight out, straight out, straight out of Brooklyn, New York, uh, we, we, we got now uh, the, the, the two-time candidate for knockout of the year, uh, you know, d- d- down with the Olympic team, just turned pro recently, but has been, been, been kicking ass and taking names. Uh, <laughs> This 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 brother right here is family to the show. He, y'all seen him in the studio, and I wish we could get get back in the studio. We're gonna get there soon. But the man with the baddest hands since uh since since uh Mike Tyson coming out of Brown. <laughs> oh man, Shoo Shoo Carrington. What yes, sir. My brother, welcome back. Thank you, thank you, man. It's happy to be back, man. I'm so, so happy to be back, you know, talking with you guys, man. I'm, you know, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, man, and and, and we got a lot to get into. And, I mean, it, it, it wouldn't even be right if we didn't start. I mean, we sent our votes in already for <laughs> the knockout of the year, you know, and they take our votes real serious, you know, so I think we're going to yeah. make that happen. But uh, this last fight, man, Madison Square Garden, uh, yeah. the, the, the Mecca, um, and you went out My there dear. and you, and you had the performance of the night. So just talk to us about that. Ah, man. Well, uh, thank and, you. I appreciate that. You did before you answered, I got to ask you this too, man. Who upset you? Because you got knockout, you got a candidate for knockout of the year, <laughs> two fights. We only into April of 2022. <laughs> it was only April and you already got two of them joints up there. Oh man. I mean, yeah, you know what? <laughs> I mean, to be honest. It, it was just more so just if you can say whoever made me upset it's myself because I, I I put myself through the hardships of training and you know all of that work that I put in man like somebody had to you know take somebody had to take that punishment man honestly because I didn't run up all of these mountains up in Vegas and run these treacherous weathers and temperatures and stuff like that and sparring these top level guys for nothing like you know what I mean? Somebody gonna have to get this work for, for me putting in all this hard work. So, you know what I mean? So uh, that's that's kind of, you know, why, what you saw in the ring, to be honest. Facts, facts, well, you, you look great in the ring, bro. You, you did, definitely thank you. did your thing. Thank well, you, thank you. <laughs> when I seen the two-piece, right, it was it was crazy because <laughs> cause it was actually, um, shout out shout out to uh, to Melba. I shoot for Melba. She owns the restaurant in Harlem. And I seen she was at the fight. And I didn't, I didn't even, I didn't realize it was on yet. So I just happened to be going on IG and I see, I see her recording and it's you. And I'm, yeah. like, I'm like, hold up. That's the homie. Hold on. <laughs> what's, what's going on here? And then, you know, we got the two piece her around the world. Right. Um, <laughs> what, what was, was there some type of issue with you two guys before the fight? Cause I, cause I felt like there was some back and forth that was going on. I think, you know, maybe he was feeling himself a little bit too much. What, what was going on with that? Nah, nah, there was no issue at all, per se, to be honest. Like, you know, the guy came to fight. You know, the guy was competitive, you know what I'm saying? So it was, you know, like, it was something that actually I respected because I like fighting guys that, like, that kind of push me. You know, if the, the better my opponents, the better that I'm going to fight. You know what I'm saying? The more I, you know, step up in opposition, you know, the better that, you know, my skills are going to show be shown in the ring. So it's kind of like, you know, it, it was a... You know, I it was a um I had full control of the fight, let's say. So I want to say it was like competitive to where it was like it was challenging or anything like that. To be honest, because you know with the things that we worked on in the gym, it kind of like worked out you know naturally into this fight. But he was definitely not a guy that just was gonna just sit down for you know for any punch. You know what I'm saying? He was a guy that was really gritty and he fought to win. You know what I mean? He had a cut on his eye early in the fight. 
and he didn't let that bother him. And he came out strong in the third round and stuff like that. And even the beginning of the fifth round where I stopped him, it was like he came out with a lot of tenacity. So, you know, it was just more so of like, uh, how can I say, uh, competitiveness, you know what I mean? It was a lot of competitive, competitiveness going on into that fight. Now, I, I recently heard you speaking with Fight Hub, and you sound like a student of the game, which I really like. So, Thank you. personally, which knockout did you enjoy more? The January knockout, where it seemed like you had the flurry against Brown, <laughs> or against Andrew Hall? Because against Andrew Hall, it was a smooth slip, overhand mm -hmm. right, then the left hand put him night-night. So which yeah. one did you, did you enjoy more? Ah, man. Ah, so now, both of them were pretty devastating. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not even going to lie. But the one I could say I enjoyed more was probably the second one. Just because I really worked for this one is more because it was like, you know, I got in fifth, like, all in, I got to work all the way into the fifth round. And I never been to the fifth round in a pro fight. You know what I'm saying? So, it was good to for me to do that, get my rounds in and showcase my talent in front of the fans. And then the second part, the fans. Like, I had the whole Brooklyn there, the whole Browns with it, the whole team character that was out there. And they, like, mind you, I want you to put this, put this thing in perspective, to be honest. Like, any type of professional boxing event you go to, if it's, like, the third bout of the night, the, and this, the arena is still empty. By the time I fought, by the time I stepped out and walked to the ring, it was packed. Like, it was so many people that was there. And I honestly didn't expect that because, you know, like I said, I was in the third fight. I yeah. thought it was going to be, you know, a lot of people was going to miss it or whatever. Like, it was such a dope experience to see that everybody that I expected to be, that I wanted to be there, they were there and more. You know what I'm saying? And then I got to show, I got to, you know, perform in front of Edgar Belangas people, you know, but Puerto Rico was in the building and everything like that, and I got new fans, and it was much more electrifying because because of that. Oh, that's, yeah. I mean, listen, it, it, any, anytime you get a knockout like that at Madison Square Garden, that's big time. <laughs> you know, especially, you know, being from here and to, to know you got that, you know, you got the, the, the home team, and, and just to be at a, a, such a historic arena as Madison Square Garden, where we've seen a lot of great, great fights uh, go down. And to yeah. know that now you're part of that history at Madison Square Garden, it's got yeah, a yeah. different feeling, man. Yeah, that's the, that's the best feeling, man. Like, I feel like every boxer's dream is to at least fight one time in the Mecca, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I've always, you know, grown up watching guys fight in the uh, Golden Gloves and, like, you know, Daniel Jacobs, Saddam Ali, uh, you know, the best of the best in New York that came up, you know, they all fought in the Mecca, you know, and it was like a dream of mine to fight in the professional. And me being that I got that opportunity, my third pro fight, like, man, I, it, it was just like a blessing, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was God's blessing. And I honestly feel like, you know, I took advantage of the opportunity, man. Like, honestly, I ain't gonna lie to you. I was nervous. Like, I was super, super nervous, yo. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, I was like, man, like, yo, I want that bass myself in front of my people. I ain't trying to take no L, da, da, da. But at the same time, I was super confident in my in the work that I put in my training. I mean, so I was 100% ready. I just, you know, my, that was my first time really getting to experience me fighting in a pro, in the pros in front of my home crowd. And, I was hoping that, you know, the, the crowd didn't get in my head and nothing like that, and I didn't play with the crowd. Because you, you can get lost into the fight by doing that, honestly. Like, I've had my own experiences with, with that, and uh, I'm glad I didn't revert back to that, and that makes me feel extra confident going going forward into my uh, my, my boxing career. Yeah, and, you, you know, I know you, you know you talked about how hard you've been working. You know, we, we've, we've been following your career for, for some years now, um, and I, I'm actually, I, I was so happy to see you at, at the garden. Um, because you know, last, even when last time we spoke, when you came on the show, we were talking about the Olympics and being the alternate and whatnot. And then now you get ready to go to, to try again, COVID happens. And then that doesn't yeah. happen. Just talk to me about, about the, the, that whole process and talk to me about your mental, uh, state dealing with that. Cause I know that can be rough when you 
kind of put your all into getting ready to go to the Olympics. And then that doesn't happen, you know, just so just talk to me about that. Yeah, man, it was kind of, it was really challenging, honestly, because I'm a positive guy. I can, uh, you know, I'm mostly like, you know, I like to stay optimistic about certain things, you know, especially when it's something that, you know, pertains to my career. So uh, it was always like, you know, just, you know, just keep working, keep working, keep working. Even every door that closed in my face, uh, you know, from uh, qualifying for the 2020 Olympic team. And then I couldn't even qualify because the qualifiers got uh, canceled because of the pandemic. And then back it down and then into 2021, early 2021, trying to do the qualifications again, that got canceled again because of an outbreak in Argentina. So, and then, you know, me turning pro and then supposed to fight in July, originally for the Tyson Fury Wilder three um, undercard, but that got postponed to October. So it was just like really, really hard that I had to learn how to just swallow all of that, to be honest, and deal with it. Cause it was, boxing always taught me how to, you know, whatever you deserve, whatever you win or lose, it's on you. And you, I can always kind of control that factor with all of this, I can't control nothing. That kind of bugged me out a little bit, especially when the Olympics came, man. Like, mind you, when the Olympics came, the postponement, the first po the postponement, the first time of the Tyson Fury Wilder card, you know, that happened. So it was just like, I'm literally sitting at home. I didn't have my first pro fight yet now. And now I'm watching the Olympics. I'm like literally tearing up, man. It was like, it was cool to see all my friends, you know, do their thing. And, you know, we got a few medals and stuff like that. But, you know, it was kind of a bittersweet moment, you know, watching that because it's like, man, like I, I, I did everything that I was supposed to do to be there. And, you know, that was stripped away from me. And now I'm pro and my first fight that was supposed to be under a big undercard, that got postponed. And I'm not even sure if I'm still going to fight on that. So that's how my mind was working around that time. But luckily, I still was able to remain on that Wilder Fury card. And ever since, you know, I got on that first card, uh, performed. I got a lot of people watching me, and then you know, I just you know took the. I just hit the ground running after that. Yeah, and, and you know, I remember when you when you told me you was gonna be on the on on that undercard too. So you know, you, the Olympics might not have worked out, but you know, you definitely been been getting a lot of blessings coming your way. Yes, definitely, definitely. God has definitely been blessing me in different ways. You know, what I'm saying I, I always thought that, you know, God always put the like his chosen like you know god always put a pick certain people you know to put through certain hardships because he know that they can handle it yeah. but you know the, the you know that specific person has to have faith to know that you know there's like you know light at the end of the tunnel you know what i'm saying so i just even though it was hard it was difficult i just you know i remained you know disciplined and i made sure that you know i just stick to the game plan and things are finally starting to come together now, as all that was going on, and obviously hindsight is twenty twenty, mm -hmm. was there ever a moment where you said, man, I wish I would have just turned pro as opposed to chase, chasing the Olympic dream and then everything getting derailed that way? Uh, nah, nah. Like, I honestly wanted to, I honestly was, uh, even when they were telling us, like, all, oh, because they, they kind of briefed me and a few other guys that, was, that went through the same thing that I did and being, you know, get, getting off the team they kind of briefed us and letting us know like, yo, like this might happen if you guys might not be able to go to Tokyo. So it was kind of like, but they also was like, yo, we're going to fight for you guys. Let us know if you want to keep, you know, want us to keep fighting for you and this, that, and third. And I was wanting to ride it to the wheels fall off, to be honest. Like, I was just like, nah, like, you know, like if y'all, you can let me go to the Olympics, you can work, you know, get to, you can work to get to the Olympics. Let's do it because I ain't pulling this hard work in for nothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? But, I honestly could have turned pro back in 2016 because I was the Olympic alternate for the uh, Olympics um, back then. And, you know, I, I was 19 at the time. I, but there's a lot of young guys that turned pro at 17, 18, 19. But it was something that I'm, I, I, I stayed humble and I was grounded. And, you know, I was true to myself. I knew that I didn't have enough international experience or just experience as a whole. My, men, my mental stability wasn't as strong as it is now you know I have my man strength now 
and you know my IQ is like 10 times you know better than it was back then so it was a lot of things that I put into perspective you know what I mean or at that you know back when I was 19 and I decided to say uh, an extra four years and there was no no uh second guesses no second thoughts of about turning pro or anything like that there's a lot of people that wanted to you know tell me that they turn pro like a lot of trainers and stuff like that oh you should turn pro blah, blah, blah. you're wasting your time this that, and the third but no nah, like all of that I was learning so much like I was getting so much experience and meeting all these new people and you know like I wouldn't change anything for the world even though I didn't wasn't able to go for the go to the Olympics like the experience that I had changed me into the fighter and today well, something better is definitely gonna be on the horizon soon, and it's gonna, it's yeah. gonna be something that you wrap around your waist, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so now that so now that you know we're here, pro, um, talk. Let, let us know. Are you planning on being active, active? Because you know we got a lot of fighters that you know they jump in the ring once a year, and yeah. their boxing them is stagnated, and they are gonna say the sport is dead. Mm. How um how active are you planning on being? I'm planning on being very active, man. Uh, how can I say? I started in October, January, March. You guys are going to see me in the ring again in June. I'll be back in the ring again in June. So y'all be prepared for that. We didn't get location and, and, and date yet. But, you, have you know, opponent when, yet? say that again. You have opponent yet locked in or? No, I have an opponent yet. I mean, it's still pretty early. You know what I'm saying? So for, for me to get an opponent, you know, it's still pretty early. But, uh, yeah, man, like, nah, like. I'm I'm staying very busy. I want everybody to know who Bruce Shushu Carrington is. I'm, I really want to become a household name, and uh, you know, just build build that brand and build my popularity as time goes on. Because I just you know, I, I every single time I fight, you know, I plan on putting a crowd pleasing performance, and I just hope my fans love it. You know, and love um, what I bring to the ring every single time I step out. You know what I'm saying? So you're knocking about yeah. like I, you've been doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, y'all gonna you see gonna, me a lot, man. Y'all gonna see yeah, me a lot. Yeah, you gonna grow a fan base real quick if you keep getting them out of there like that. <laughs> hey, you know what's crazy though? To be honest, it's like I'm not even like a knockout dude for for like I'm more so of a boxer, like you know, a, a technician. You know, to if I say if I say so myself, to be honest, like I don't go for the knockout. That's not even my thing. I just you know like to be accurate and pinpoint my shots. But if the knockout comes, the knockout comes. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? But I like to showcase my talent. I like to box. I like to use the ring. I like to fight in the inside. I like to, you know, I like to show all aspects of my arsenal. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, uh, I got a two-part question for you there, Bruce, as well, because you yeah. mentioned Berlanga earlier, and I know you're early in your, your career and your development. How important is it to get rounds over going for a knockout? And then if you can't speak on a friendship with you and Berlanga, like, you, have you guys known each other for quite some time? Because I saw y'all were really chopping it up after your fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, so uh, the first question, I think, is you know, extreme, it's, uh, extremely valuable to go for knockout. No, excuse me, go for rounds over knockouts because you become more marketable. Like, think about Deontay Wilder, right? Like, he was just knocking guys out, knocking guys out, knocking guys out. Yeah, it's entertaining. Yeah, it's cool, but can you do rounds? Like, what if you can't knock a certain person out? Like, well, can I? bet on you or can I depend on you to still win these fights but if you're you know you know putting in these rounds and will you get tired in the later rounds can you be a, can you fight in the championship rounds and then he became more marketable after he beat Berman Stavern he did he did the, he could have knocked him out anytime he wanted to that first time but he decided to go to 12 to full 12 rounds and at that point he became more marketable as a fighter and you could kind of like you know depend on him more because of that uh me, same thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't try to go for the knockout. I always feel like, you know, you can really, you know, show your full self in, you know, with the rounds that you're given. And also, plus, knockouts is nice, right? But I feel like it's something, like, more, it's something meaner about beating a guy up and beating him down for 12 rounds and he can't do nothing about it. Like, a knockout is one him. shot. Just punch him. You could be losing the fight. Him. You know what I'm saying? You can knock a guy out. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like you beating a dude down for 12 rounds and he trying everything he, he can possibly do and he can't do nothing about it. You just beating him up. I feel like it's something more like, you know, more savage about that to me, to be honest. You know what I mean? So, 
But you can still yeah. beat him down like that and then knock him out in the 12. I mean, yeah, true, 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 true. Like, he still didn't get the knockout. <laughs> he still did the knockout. Hey, if the knockout comes, it comes. But I'm going to beat you down regardless. That's how it is, man. Not because every time you get a knockout, I, you know, I tell people, you, you know, that's my boy right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but on, on the thing with our, on our question on Belinga, yeah, no, me and Belinga go way back. Uh, me and him started, like, we were, uh, we actually used to spar each other back in the day when I, we were, like, probably like nine, ten years old. Can you believe, like, he's way bigger than me now? But we was the same size at one point. The first, like, uh, he was already boxing, but, and I was, and, um, I started out in the Star City Boxing Club, and I was probably like already like two years in. He was already boxing in his own right too, but when he finally joined my gym, I was his first sparring partner. You know what I'm saying? And we used to spar all the time, just going blow for blow, blow for blow, blow for blow. You know what I mean? It was always great work with me and him, but we just grew up together and going to different tournaments, going to national tournaments together, and you know what I'm saying? He became our brother, man, for real, for real. He became like, you know, like a brother, like his dad, me and me and his dad and our dads are tight and everything. Like, golly. People, people trying to call me during the interview. I'm doing the interview, man. Stop calling me. Man, get out of here. But uh, but yeah, man, like, you know, it was like really cool, man, to see to share, you know, that event with him. Like, you know what I'm saying? And being on his undercard, like that was so dope. So I could share that moment because we dreams of times like this, you know what I mean? We dream to, you know, be on top, you know, together, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like something that's like, you know, fairy tale type of story type of joint, you know what I mean? Definitely, we, we, we getting there, you know, we definitely getting, uh, getting to that point. Um, now you, you just mentioned, you mentioned sparring. Yeah. You, you've had some pretty well-known, uh, sparring partners. Yeah. During, during your, your, your career. Yeah. Uh, two, two of the guys are two of the biggest uh, names in boxing. Uh, mm -hmm. Devontae uh, 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 Tank Davis, Davis Tank, yeah, and uh, and uh, Shakur, yeah, Shakur and uh, Shakur Stevenson, yeah. So, um, talk talk to us about being being in the ring sparring with those guys because those are you know some of the guys that you might have to see on your journey up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, nah, those it was it's very interesting sparring those guys. Uh, and it's like two, obviously, because their styles, it's two type of different mindsets you have to go in when it comes to sparring. And, you know, with Tank, uh, he's fast, he's explosive, you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes he likes to lure you in and use his reflexes to make you throw a shot, and then, you know, he'll, like, explode with a nice uppercut to the body or a nice uppercut up, here, up to the top. So it's certain things that, you know, I have the reflexes to keep up, you know what I'm saying? So uh, it's, like, really interesting to... Uh, go back and forth when it comes to, you know, our reflexes and everything like that. But yeah, no, nah, Tank is strong. That's one thing I, they don't call him Tank for no reason, man. That dude, that dude can punch, you know what I'm saying? So I'll be on my P's and Q's when it comes to him. Uh, and Shakur, you really got to be on your P's and Q's with that guy because it's not like, you, you, you're not as cautious when it comes to the power with Shakur, but his power is still respectable, but it's like, he will beat you down and frustrate the heck out of you if you let him. Like, in order to touch him, just to touch him, you got to think outside the box because he's a master of his defense. He's a master of distance. He's a master of, his, you know, of his craft when it comes to that. You know what I'm saying? He's like, he's a really hard worker, but you can tell his competitiveness is like, you know, is like different. Like, that dude is an animal, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, so it's always like a chess match when I'm in the ring with him. Do you think it's it's it would be harder for you in a in, in an actual fight against uh, Shakur Stevenson or against Tank Davis? Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I was about to say, Trip, don't 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 set the man up because yeah, yeah, yeah. Be yeah. In the future, yeah, yeah, that 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 might be. That I'm working on the fight right now for you. I'm trying to set it up. I, I'm just saying uh, that <laughs> there, there is potential that they may have to see each other at some point. So you don't want to give away too much right now about yeah, who yeah, might no, be no, a more no, difficult that's opponent, that's but. You know what I mean? I would say that, you know, it will, one thing I will say is that it will be an interesting fight if I was to fight either one of them guys. That's all I would say. Okay. You know I mean? It would be an interesting fight, something that, you know, uh, the viewers are going to want to tune into. Do you do you go into to these sparring sessions with like a little, like, you know what, I really want to kind of show, do my thing in here just to show <laughs> them. Do you ever go into a sparring match like that? 
I mean, not really, to be honest. Like, I don't really be trying to show off and all like that. But really, I, when I'm sparring, I'm trying to get that. I'm trying to get some work. I work on different things. Sparring is like, we got to look at sparring like basketball practice. It's practice. You know what I'm saying? You make all your mistakes and you try all your new tricks in sparring. You know what I'm saying? So it's already perfected by the time you fight. So I already go in there trying to show off and all like that. Like, I really want to get some good work with good people. And, you know, it's always good to have a good dance partner. And that's how I like to look at it. And those are two of the best if, you, if you're going to get one. Definitely. Definitely. Guys. Definitely. Now, and we mentioned those two guys. Obviously, the lightweight division is stacked. A lot of star power in the lightweight division. Do you see yourself? Because right now you're at featherweight, correct? Correct. How long before you see yourself transition into lightweight? Or do you plan on staying at featherweight? No, I plan on staying at featherweight. Uh, I'm, I'm great at featherweight right now. Like, my, I'm, I'm very strong. Uh, you know, my... I, stamina and speed and everything I, i'm i'm fine at, at, at featherweight and i'm gonna be a featherweight for some time like i'm not going nowhere yet honestly i, I want to unify the division uh get multiple belts and then that's at that point that's when i'll think about moving up but until then 20, 126 in my home okay nice nice um now recently you decided to go with top rank mm-hmm. yeah yeah. Um, I mean, uh, so that and that and that's that's Bob Arum, uh -huh. one of the most known, you know, figures in the sport of boxing. He actually he had some very nice things, uh, to say about you. I don't know if if the, if, the, if if he said that before <laughs> your debut, or before your second fight, or or before the the first fight. But he has some really nice things to say about you. But um, why the decision to go with with top rank? Um. It was multiple things that intrigued me, to be honest about them, because I'm a guy that's, I love social media. I love marketing myself and selling myself. I love, pop, you know, the, the, the whole fan base and building my fan, my fan base. And what better network to do it on than, but than ESPN? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that they, they, they got ESPN, man. And also one thing I also noticed, Top Rank has stood through the test of time through the decades they always adapted even through the pandemic they were the first promotional company to be fighting having uh, uh like out of the big three the zone pbc and top rank they were the first out of the big three to have fights during yeah. the pandemic consistently you know what i'm saying like they made they always know how to like roll with the punches so it was like man if anything goes on and everything happens during the world and like you know what i mean drastic I can depend on them to keep the fights going, to keep me fighting. And sometimes, actually, like, that's honest. That's kind of honestly how certain fighters became very popular. Like, Jared Anderson, he fought, like, probably, like, six, seven times that year and or whatever. Like, and, you know, being that everybody was just home watching TV and they kept seeing Jared, kept seeing Jared, kept seeing Jared. Now he's, he's becoming, like, you know, a very popular figure now. And it's like, that was very impressive. You know, like through all of this time, like Bob Robinson's been back, been been around since Muhammad Ali was was fighting, bro. You know what I mean? So they, these guys can adapt to anything. Uh, that's they, I can rely on that. You know what I mean? And you know, like we just worked out a sweet deal, man. And you know, I was super happy to to be a part of the team. Let me let me let me just before you go, Eric. Let me I just want to read the quote from 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 Bob Arum because because of who Bob Arum is, for him to to say this about you. I, you know, I, I mean, we already knew you was about to be, you know, wait, God. <laughs> you know, the rest of the world. but uh, he says, uh, Bruce Carrington is one of the great American amateurs of his generation. And he has the makeup and skills to be a future world champion. Oh man. Oh, that's nice. What, 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 where, where did that source come from? I didn't hear him say that. I didn't hear him say that. We do our homework over here. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Y'all do it. Y'all do it. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what's up, man. Uh, it was real cool to find out that he's from Brooklyn too. And I ain't know Bob was from Brooklyn, man. Once I heard that, I was, and then he called me his homie. <laughs> I was like, all right, man, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I can rock with you, Bob. <laughs> now, now, I got to ask you too. I mean, you've spent a lot of your life in the sport of boxing, right? You started training yeah. very young. Obviously, yeah. a professional now, a great amateur career. What are your thoughts on some of these people who are trying to transition to boxing through the exhibition route? and making more of a showcase out of it as opposed to taking a traditional route? 
All right, so that's a good question. I am conflicted on that. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I look at, I, I'm, on, I'm looking at two sides of it, right? So as a boxer, from a boxer standpoint, um, it's a little distasteful, a little bit, to be honest, because it's like guys like me and other boxers that actually take the sport, the sport like seriously, we don't get the popularity or the notoriety and like get at, paid as much as these guys that's like doing these exhibitions and all of that just because they're popular. You know what I'm saying? Like, we really put years into the game. And by us not getting those opportunities that, that they're getting, it's kind of like, you know, it's, 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 it's whatever to me. You know what I'm saying? But business part, right, is the other side of me. I'm thinking these guys are actually helping the sport of boxing by bringing a whole different field of people that don't even watch boxing or might not even be interested in boxing coming to watch the sport and maybe they'll be interested in watching other fighters and learning from other fighters like I definitely wouldn't mind fighting under an undercard of one of these exhibition fights because of how many people watch them you know what I'm saying outside people because people think of that like all oh, the boxing fans and the boxing world is but so big the boxing world is, is small to be honest compared to the rest of the world you know what I'm saying so let me focus on the rest of the world fan base real quick as well too you know what I mean so it's it's lucrative it's a smart idea and it shows to you it it, it it exposes you that yo popularity is really the name of the game and sometimes it's not about how good you can fight sometimes it's about you know the outside you know uh, uh field and you know getting them to put getting you know getting them to put you know their butts in seats for your fight yeah absolutely absolutely now I gotta go back because you, you know I, the, the Brooklyn, the Brooklyn in me. I always, I always gotta go back to the borough because this is yeah. old, right here. Yeah. I, I, I mentioned, I mentioned one name out of Brownsburg early in the show. You know, one of the greatest heavyweights to ever do it. I am Mike Tyson. Mike. Right. Yes, sir. There's another, there's another guy out of Brooklyn who also has some crazy hands, uh, a, a crazy right jab to, you know, more specifically, Zab Judah. Zab. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Zab Super Judah. So yeah. talk talk to me about how big it is for you coming from Brownsville and coming from the same place as as Mike Tyson, who's considered one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. As is that yeah. dude, who's also an all time great in his own right as well. And now you got Bruce Carrington. Talk to me about that 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 just that that legacy of fighters. Oh yeah, uh, uh, it's it's amazing. You know what I'm saying? But I also want to throw in some more names in there. There's Shannon Briggs that's out there. There's a uh, uh, um, champion from Brownsville. There's Riddick Bowe that's champion from Brownsville. There's uh, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, Daniel Jacobs, uh, uh, Al Bummy Davis. Yeah. All of them are champions from Brownsville. You know what I'm saying? All right, but to get back to your question, right? To, I, it's, it, it's big because all of these guys, like, it, it's become, like, a thing to where, like, yo, Brownsville breed champions. It's not like, you know, it's not it's not like oh, it's New Yorkers like they they breed champions or Brooklyn breed champions. Like, nah, it's a neighborhood, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta realize how small that is, you know. And 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 what in the, what is the environment like? Why are there good fighters that come out of this new neighborhood? Like, what is going on? What is the what? Is there something in the water that they drinking or something like that? Like, what is going on? And Honestly, it's something that, like, you know, I, I, I hold with pride in my back, man, because nothing but grace can come out of there. And it's, 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 it's and then to make it out of there, you got to be a, a certain type of person. You got to have a certain type of hunger, a certain type of discipline, a certain type of, you know what I mean? A certain type of mindset. So just me making it out of there. Well, I'm ain't, not a ain't, the, ain't the most positive of neighborhoods in Brooklyn, bro. Yeah, yeah. So like, you gotta Brownsville, gotta yeah, man. It's... It's, it's actually one of the roughest, toughest neighborhoods. Even the toughest neighborhoods in Brooklyn can't, don't be one to come to Brownsville. Yeah. Like, that's how it is. You know what I mean? Like, right now, the sun is down. And people don't even want to walk in Brownsville in the roughest, <laughs> toughest neighborhood in Brooklyn. That's, yeah. People from Brownsville you know I mean? don't even want to walk in Brownsville. Right. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? So that's kind of how it is, man. So for me to get, uh, to make it out, that's something special. And for me to make it as far as I, as I, am, as I am right now and have sights to make it even further. You know what I mean? I'm at the base of my mountain right now. I'm not even, at, I'm nowhere near the mountaintop. This is only the beginning. 
it's a blessing to be where I'm at today. That's a fact. Who, who was one fighter who was your inspiration or that you looked up to as you were growing up and really learning the sport? Uh, first off was Mike Tyson. I mean, obviously, come on, Brownsville. Uh, it was someone that I kind of, you know, really uh, was drawn to because of his style of fighting. Everybody loved Mike Tyson, man. And then plus, when I first started out boxing, everybody that I fought was taller than me. So I always wanted to, so I just adapted that style and everything like that. But as I got older, I started to realize that that style didn't fit well with my physique. You know, I was, I grew to be, you know, slim and, you know, lean and that style is more, it's called for more of a, you know, brute, muscular guy, you know, and I started to naturally cross into Mayweather's style. For Mayweather was, after a while, even to this day, became, you know, the main, you know, guy that I started to watch, you know, throughout the years it's because the shoulder roll and the way he uses reflexes and the way how he systematically broke a guy down like he'll fight a guy an aggressive guy that throws 100 punches around or whatever that the person that's known for throwing a lot of punches he'll fight them and take their punch count down and make them fight at his pace and make them fight his fight every single time he got into the ring that dude was a genius in the ring and i studied him and wanted to fight just like him every single time you know what i'm saying so uh, Mayweather is definitely an, was another person that uh, I grew up watching, and I implement, implemented my style from. Can't go wrong with uh, with either one of those guys. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. I mean, May, what can, what can yeah. you not say about Mayweather like that? Yeah, 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 definitely. That's, that's oh, a, oh, one more guy, one more guy. Uh, Pernell Whitaker. I love from where Pernell Whitaker. Sweet the way how his defense that's, was. Yes. Okay, I was about to say because that's one of the most de- between him and Mayweather. That's probably the two best defensive fighters. Honestly, I feel like natural defense, like with natural defense, with with reflexes, I give it to Purnell. Mayweather was just more so of a guy, like he didn't weave every shot. Like he would catch a couple shots, block a couple, didn't weave like two in a combination. And then, you know what I'm saying? Shoulder roll, whatever, you know what I'm saying? The shoulder roll was just like, he didn't need reflexes with a shoulder roll. It's just, it's already guarded. You know what I'm saying? Sweet pea, he... You know, dick, you know, ducking, dipping, and diving every single punch. You know what I'm saying? So his was more was more so based on his reflexes and agility, and he relied a lot on his motor skills. Yeah, he relied he, he relied a lot on his motor skills. So it was uh, you know, I can say yeah, like you know, reflexes. Why Sweet Pea had better reflexes and 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 a uh, natural defense in terms of uh, you know, yeah, with the reflexes and everything. But Mayweather kind of you know uses brain and learned how to use that shoulder roll. I got you. Now, we, we have a lot of uh, boxing friends um, just because, you know, we're big fans of boxing. Um, you know, we rock out with Rankton, New York, which is one of the, the, the big boxing charities um, out here in New York. So we come across a lot of fighters. Um, one in particular, Aaron Davis, Aaron Superman Davis. Um, he's actually yeah. not too far from where I am right now over at Morris Park Boxing Club. But, um, you know, I spoke to him a couple of years ago and he, you know, he was telling me about how he basically, you know, set up his life and um, his future while he was, you know, in, you know, in the, in the peak of his, uh, his boxing career. So my yeah. question is, how are you um, planning? Are you, are you, are you planning your future out right now so that you can sustain yourself once you've decide, all right, I've done enough in the sport of boxing. Now I can step away. Definitely. You know, I'm I'm also, fo- because I'm focused on, uh, you know, outside things as well, too. Like, outside of boxing, like, I, I also I always wanted to be a actor. You know what I mean? And uh, do certain things of that sort. Um, You know, probably, like, you know, do some modeling and stuff and all that. You know, I always wanted to do other things like that as well. But also making, you know, certain type of investments for my money, like, you know, learning about, you know, real estate and, you know, put my money into stuff like that. And, you know, like, bro, like, I'm really thinking about all of that stuff before I even think about, like, retiring, you know what I'm saying? So I could be well, you know, set, you know, beyond my years. Smart man, man. You, you have to make sure you're ready for that next phase, whatever, whenever it yeah. might come. Yeah, so boxing ain't good. forever, man, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Anything can happen. I can, you know, 
hurt a hand and everything. Oh, speaking of, actually, uh, my last fight, I don't have my hand brace on right now. I left it inside my house. But, yeah, like, I, ha I, I have a hand brace because I actually have a, a torn ligament in my knuckle. Like, I don't know if you guys can see it. Like, this knuckle here in the middle is kind of, like, yeah, like lopsided from here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this one is, you kind of see it's big, right? But anyway, uh, my... That's from the, from my, the jaw when you... When you but that was when the left, that was when you hit him with nah, those. That's when he nine slipped nine. the left. That's when he slipped the left. It came <laughs> with the overhand right. Uh, but honestly, that actually happened on my first knockout. That didn't even happen my last fight. My, oh. my first knockout when I fought in Tulsa, Oklahoma in January. That That's when that fight, that, that's when that happened. It happened in the first round. I was lining him up for a right hand. He ran into it, and I didn't have enough time to close my hand. And... I fought through it. It didn't really hurt that bad throughout the, throughout the fight. But as the night went on, the adrenaline went down. I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Like, my hand was hurting. Had a little two-week rest, but, you know, rest, like, two, week, week, two weeks or whatever. And I had to hop back into camp for, for March. And I'm training. And I'm noticing, like, my hand, my right hand is really hurting. Punching the bag out there in Vegas or whatever, at top rank gym. And I'm sparring even, and I hit a guy to the body. Like, the body is like the softest part of, the, of, 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 of your body, like your stomach. And I hit the guy, and I hurt it so bad to the point where I couldn't use it anymore. And I literally only sparred three times out of my home camp. Three times. Usually, I sparred three times a week. Yeah. Throughout the whole camp, like a six-week camp, I sparred only three times because my right hand was messed up. And sometimes I would spar guys with just one, with one hand. You know what I'm saying? And it was very challenging to work through this pain. And I fought with a torn ligament and got the knockout in the fifth round in Madison Square Garden, March 19th. Wow. So so you had known for two months prior, obviously, you said in January is when you hurt the yeah. hand. At yeah. any point, did you ever think about backing out the fight? I mean, I know it was a not big platform for you. No, not at all. <laughs> I was like, listen, we're going to work with this one hand in training camp. We're going to spar with this one hand in training camp. And we're going to beat him up with this one hand in March 19th. That's how it's going to happen. And my dad, he was like real concerned. He's like, oh, bro, like, I ain't going to lie, man. Like, I don't know. You, you might have to pull out. I'm like, man, you tripping. Like, I'm in here. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm going to fight with this one hand. Like, I know my, I know my capabilities, bro. Like, I know like, I can still throw feints with this right hand. I can still, like, push a guy or take down his glove to... I could do other things with this right hand. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to just throw it all the time. It's, you got to think outside the box when you set when you set up your, your shots, bro. So I'm like, oh, like I'm perfectly fine. And plus, once I was sparring, I was beating up guys and sparring with my one hand. I'm like, man, I'm in this fight. Let's go. We in there. Brownsville See, never now, ran, never will. There you go. Man, now man. and now you, you <laughs> solidified. Playing. You solidified that the second knockout was even more impressive than the first. You you did it one handed. Yeah. Yeah, you went five, <laughs> you went you, five rounds one handed and then knocked him out. Thank you, man. We yeah, appreciate that, man. Well, if you had if the both hands was good, you might have knocked him out in the second, and then you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm glad I'm glad I did it, you know, stop the guy early because I mean, I, I noticed that I, I heard him the first round, mm. second round, he was still like kind of ready to go as well. Third round, he showed a little bit tenacity. Fourth round, I, I uh started to invest in the body in the fifth round he was ready to go but i'm glad i i was able to give you know some rounds and and you know go past four rounds because i i always wanted to show that the more the rounds continue the better i'm gonna get like i'm gonna get sharper i'm gonna still like i'm gonna show my stamina and uh my power is still there in the later rounds and stuff like that like you know so i can give the viewers and my new fans or whatever more confidence when they see me and to, you know, have faith that I'm going to win each and every fight. Do, do, do guys trash talk you in the ring? No, nah, no, nah, nah, I, I haven't come across that yet, but uh, I won't be surprised when I do. I've been seeing it all, to be honest. Like, I done, I've been boxing for 17 years. I've been fighting the best of the best in the world and, uh, and since the amateurs, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't dealt with all the trash talks and all of that stuff. Like, I'm such a calm guy, bro. Like, none of that ever will phase me. I mean, so I look forward to it. It will be interesting and entertaining when it happens. But it, they'll have a rude awakening when they do. Who's on, on uh, obviously, there's always a debate about this, but who's your number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter right now? 
right now. Oof, right I can you, you put me against the wall. Uh, 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 pound for pound, man. I got to, honestly, I got to go with Canelo. I got to go with Canelo Alvarez. Uh, he's the face of boxing. Um, you know, I mean, Canelo Alvarez, he's the man, but right behind him are Terrence and Earl. They're, they're, they're definitely right behind him, but, you know, but Canelo, he's like, you know, going these, these different weight classes, doing what he's doing and, uh, you know, still, you know, very relevant in the sport. And but um, to, be, to be honest, Canelo is still relatively young too. Yeah. I mean, so, he's so uh, you know, he's been in the, been boxing for so long, you don't even realize. Yeah, how. you wouldn't. Yeah, you don't really realize it. But yeah, no, Canelo's really young. Like, how how old was he when he fought Mayweather? Was he like 24 or 25? Yeah, like, he was around 24, 25 when he fought. Yeah, like he was young, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, but that that right there speaks a testament of his skill and his potential, and you know, coming up in the ranks, like, bro, like he was already destined to be at the top since back then. He was. It just wasn't his time then. Now was his time. And he's at the top, uh, you know, he's at the top right now. But yeah, now Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence, when they fight, hopefully if they fight, <laughs> then I feel like I will adjust my uh, pound for pound rankings at that point. But uh, yeah, that's my list. I'm going to expand upon uh, Eric's question. I want to know who not named Bruce Carrington is the best fighter in Brooklyn right now. Now, oh, in Brooklyn <laughs> right now. Ah, uh, uh, oh man. I mean, honestly, I'm gonna lie to you. I don't really keep up with a lot of boxes in Brooklyn, to be honest. I, I honestly don't. Um, uh, you know, you know, we we all we we, we oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm tripping. I'm, I'm sorry. Let me let me let me not say that. I just thought about <laughs> I, a few I was boxes. About to say, yeah, I, was about I just to thought say. about a few boxes. Just now. <laughs> I thought about Edgar. I thought about Jose Bar no, no Jose Vargas from the Bronx. I thought about Teofimo oh. Lopez. I thought about uh, I thought about a few guys. Uh, but you know. The best right now, I would say, is Teofimo Lopez from Brooklyn. Uh, he's like probably the most notable guy right now. Um, uh, it's Teo is actually yeah. who I was thinking about when I asked you about your hand because when he took the loss, then we found out later on he was dealing with an injury. But obviously, yeah, he didn't make yeah. any excuses for it. He no, yeah, so it, was, it was, was like an uh, interior, like a respiratory, oh, something right. to where he could actually yeah. died in the rain. Yeah, he could have died. Yeah, that was something crazy that went on, bro. I'm super glad that, you know what I mean? That's my boy. I'm super glad, you know, nothing, you know, traumatic happened. I'm, wow, I, I was crazy, man. Yeah, thank but, uh, you. Yeah, no, nah, I think Teofimo is right now is probably, like, the biggest name from Brooklyn. Um, May 28th, Tank is going to be in Brooklyn. Are you going to be in the building? Ooh, yeah, I hope so. I want to be in the building, but I... I I also I'm gonna be in Vegas for for camp because for my fight in June. That's right, yeah. You know I mean, but hey, if I could if I could you know so go for the weekend, real quick, yeah, go go. I, I'm a, I'm gonna leave Saturday morning and uh, uh, go back home Sunday Sunday morning. You know what I mean, just for a day. You know, I would love to be in Brooklyn and watch that fight because I remember the first time and the only time I believe that Tank fought in Brooklyn was when he fought Jose Pedraza. Uh, that was a uh, great night because you know of his performance but i remember the crowd that he brought was you know amazing the dude is a superstar now you know what i'm saying so i know the building the building will be packed when he fights this time and i would love to be a part of that and i believe this is the first fight in the barclays since the pandemic so this one is going to be huge yeah. i think this is the first boxing fight since the pandemic well until until um, we get, uh and, and um and, and fight at the barclays center then that'll probably yeah. be bad, man. I would love to fight the Barclays and the man, but uh, Top Ring has a contract and a relationship with Madison Square Garden. So you guys are more so going to see me in Madison Square Garden than the Barclays. Okay. Well, listen, yeah. they, they, they ain't no slouch now to be at, at the Garden. I know some. Oh, not at all. Not at all. But the Garden is the Garden. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, the Garden is the Garden, man. Nothing but history in there. Facts, facts. Oh man, yo, I, I, yo, Eric, you, you got you got anything anything left in the in, you know in the tank? What are we doing? I think nah, I think that was it. I was trying to think of something else, man, because I mean we were rolling right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. Now it's, it's always fun talking with you, though, man. It's always fun talking with you guys, man. And I always, you know, what I'm saying I love 
for you guys to even think about me to have me on y'all show and all of that for for like it's an honor for me and uh you know even when I become big time y'all can always hit me up for an interview and all that. Oh man, <laughs> y'all we appreciate you know that. What well, we know you're your that though. exclusive. Yeah. Now you listen once 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 you come into the family you family for life. We always yeah, want to see that on, on, on your career. Like, you know, everybody that comes through the show, even like, because we get a lot of a lot of guys early on and we're kind of like with them as they climb the, the ladder. But it's always going to be going to be a family thing. You know, we appreciate you for taking the time yeah. because, you. you know, I know it's especially now you're, it's going to your schedule is going to be even crazier. The, 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 the more you. you start putting in. So we definitely appreciate you taking the time to rock out with us, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate y'all having me. Yes, sir. We, we we wish you nothing but success, man. We already see you're on your way, man. You're gonna be a star, Thank bro. You. Thank you, man. I appreciate we're, it. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pull up on you um at, at some point. We got we gotta come come check. I know you're gonna be in Vegas for the for the training camp, but we gotta come yeah. check you in, in, in Brooklyn too. Yeah, most deaf, most deaf. Y'all just hit me. Bet, bet, bet. Let me um let me shout out the sponsors before we get up out of here. Big shout out to Kmart, Petro Home Services, the Rosado Firm, and of course Soundview Liquors. Uh, make sure you guys are tuned in every Thursday night from 8 to 9 p.m. on Verizon 43. If you're not in New York City, though, you can still watch from anywhere in the world. All you got to do is go to realfansrealtalk.com. Click that red button on the homepage. Uh, this episode will be up this Thursday at 8 p.m., and you don't want to miss this one. Um, follow us on all our social media, Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash real fans real talk twitter instagram at real fan talk and make sure you have subscribed to real fans real talk podcast the sanchez show podcast and of course the shooting the shit podcast um for our grown and sexy uh, uh following uh you know <laughs> that's, that's for the late night crowd <laughs> and uh, subscribe to that youtube channel too youtube.com forward slash for the fans productions uh this interview will also be on the youtube channel as well and you guys know we got the big gene interview going on right now i think that's at about twelve thousand views so make sure you guys stay locked in with us uh bruce i'm gonna let you give us the final thought for the day man yeah man uh real quick though for the fans uh everybody that's watching uh i would like you guys to follow me on my instagram Bruce underscore Carrington and my Twitter B underscore Carrington one. Y'all gonna keep y'all keep in contact with all of that, and uh, y'all get all the new updates on when my fight is going on, how my training camp is going, and just new content for all y'all to be entertained by. Uh, also, I would love for you guys to watch my documentary, uh, Brownsville Born, thirty minute doc. You know what I mean? Thirty minute, you guys time. You can you guys can watch that on brownsvilleborn.com. And, uh, you know, give me y'all feedback, like I said, through my Instagram, and my socials, and, you know, let me know if y'all like that, man. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put the link, um, to the, to the documentary on the, Please um, do. and, uh, Instagram as well, so that they, they can, uh, check that out as well. Y'all, me, y'all better stay, stay in the loop because this, this is, he, 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 he's out of this soon. The belt is coming soon. Don't wait till the <laughs> they jump on the bandwagon. We're not doing that. You got to come now. We need all that's that. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. I'm definitely gonna check out that doc, man. We gotta put that in the link, man. Uh, get that hand right. Get healthy, man. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. I ain't fight. using this. I ain't using <laughs> this for the rest of the month. <laughs> I bet, man. Well, listen, with that being said, for myself, Trip Young, my co-host, my brother, legend in two games, Eric Sanchez, and of course, the great Bruce Carrington, uh, Mr. Mr. Two-time uh, contender for knockout of the year. And it's only April. <laughs> and it's only April. It's only... <laughs> he got He's still crazy, he, man. He, got he still got time to improve all that one. He might give us another one in June. Y'all put a pressure on me, man. Y'all yeah. put a pressure on me now. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting hot <laughs> all right man with that being said we will see you guys next week we up out of here peace uh-huh this is real fans real talk real fans real talk we as real as you thought real fans real talk we the illest of course real fans Real talk, we the illest on court. Real fans, real talk, we as real as we thought. Real fans, real talk, reporting live from the cam. High in demand, so please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans. On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emerald Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh -huh. we ahead of the Yo, streets. It's
Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend, backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in, you gotta watch, this show is one of a kind, updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9, for the older folks, so even if you younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered, it's filmed live, in the middle of BK, so ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. What's up guys, I'm Emerald Marie, and be sure to check us out on the web at realfansrealtalk.com.